Good evening. We are continuing the life and teachings of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A poor widow gives all she has. Jesus sat near the temple collection box and watched as people put money into it. Many rich people put in a lot of money. Then a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth less than a penny. Jesus called his followers to him and said, this poor widow put in only two small coins. But the truth is, she gave more than all those rich people. They have plenty, and they gave only what they did not need. Hmm. I was around some of the migrants and stopped by yesterday at a place where it's an intake facility and it's close, it was in a convenient area. And I said, oh, well, this is perfect. I have some clothes, I have some items where I can give away. And the person at the desk was like, oh, well, you have to go through Catholic charities. But let me tell you, if you have something, he said, just put it nearby in a premises and they'll take your items. And I put forth, you know, some clothes, shoes, boots, clothes. And just reading this, did I really make a sacrifice as far as the finer things that I value or were they just extra clothes from years and years that I was going to donate anyway? Were they the best? It says they gave only what they did not need. I gave pretty much what I didn't need. So that wasn't really a sacrifice. This woman is very poor, but she gave all she had. It was money she needed to live on. So that is something to consider when we give and we're sharing. Are we really sharing from our need, our surplus, or what is our motivation? Just to clear out some space. I know that they need items and they'll take whatever we can get, but most of us have way more than we need anyway. Jesus warns about the future. Jesus was leaving the temple area. One of his followers said to him, Teacher, look how big those stones are. What beautiful buildings. Jesus said, Do you see these great buildings? They will all be destroyed. Every stone will be thrown down to the ground. Not one stone will be left on another. Later, Jesus was sitting at a place on the Mount of Olives. He was alone with Peter, James, John, and Andrew. They could all see the temple. And they said to Jesus, tell us when these things will happen and what will show us it is time for them to happen. Jesus said to them, be careful. Don't let anyone fool you. Many people will come and use my name. They will say, I am the Messiah. And they will fool many people. You will hear about wars that are being fought. And you will hear stories about other wars beginning. But don't be afraid. These things must happen before the end comes. Nations will fight against other nations. Kingdoms will fight against other kingdoms. There will be times when there is no food for people to eat. And there will be earthquakes in different places. These things are only the beginning of troubles. Like the first pains of a woman giving birth. You must be careful. There are people who will arrest you and take you to be judged for being my followers. They will beat you in their synagogues. You will be forced to stand before kings and governors. You will tell them about me. Before the end comes, the good news must be told to all nations. Even when you are arrested and put on trial, don't worry about what you will say. Say whatever God tells you to at that time. It will not be really you speaking. It will be the Holy Spirit. Woo! I was talking to someone recently and I was saying, look, go before the judge. Go ahead and explain your case. Be bold. Be truthful. Be open. Hmm? Pray. The Lord will lead you and tell you exactly what to say. 
No need to be anxious. Mm -mm. Brothers will turn against their own brothers and hand them over to be killed. Fathers will hand over their own children to be killed. Children will fight against their own parents and have them killed. All people will hate you because you will follow me. But those who remain faithful to the end will be saved. And the good news I have shared about God's kingdom will be told throughout the world. It will be spread to every nation. Then the end will come. You will see the terrible thing that causes destruction. You will see this thing standing in a place where it should be. Reader, I trust you understand what this means. Everyone in Judea at the time should run away to the mountains. They should run away without wasting time to stop for anything. If someone is on the roof of their house, they must not go down to take things out of the house. If someone is in the field, they must not go back to get a coat. During that time, it will be hard for women who are pregnant or have small babies. Pray that these things will not happen in winter because those days will be full of trouble. There will be more trouble than has ever happened since the beginning when God made the world. And nothing that bad will ever happen again. But the Lord has decided to make the, the terrible time short. If it were not made short, no one could survive. But the Lord will make that time short to help the special people he has chosen. Someone might say to you at that time, look, there is the Messiah. Or another person might say, there he is, but don't believe them. False messiahs and false prophets will come and do miracles and wonders, trying to fool the people God has chosen, if that is possible. So be careful now. I have warned you about all this before it happens. During the days following that time of trouble, the sun will become dark and the moon will not give light. The stars fall from the sky and everything in the sky will be changed. Then people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He will send his angels all around the earth. They will gather his chosen people from every part of the earth. The fig tree teaches us a lesson. When its branches become green and soft and new leaves begin to grow, then you know that summer is very near. In the same way, when you see all these things happening, you will know that the time is very near. Already present, I assure you that all these things will happen while some of the people of this time are still living. The whole world, earth and sky will be destroyed, but my words will last forever. Only God knows when the time will be. No one knows when that day or time will be. The Son and the angels in heaven don't know when it will be. Only the Father knows. When the Son of Man comes, it will be the same as what happened during Noah's time. In those days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving their children to be married. Right up to the day Noah entered the boat. They knew nothing about what has happened until the flood came and destroyed them all as far as what was happening back then. It will be the same when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding grain with a mill. One will be taken and the other will be left. Be careful not to spend your time having parties and getting drunk or worrying about this life. If you do that, you won't be able to think straight and the end might come when you are not ready. It will come as a surprise to everyone on earth. So be ready all the time. Pray that you will be able to get through all these things that will happen and stand safe before the Son of Man. It's like a man who goes on a trip and leaves his house in the care of his servants. He gives each one a special job to do. He tells the servant guarding the door to always be ready. And this is what I am telling you now. You must always be ready. You don't know when the owner of the house will come back. He might come in the afternoon or at midnight or in early morning or when the sun rises. If you are always ready, he will not find you sleeping, even if he comes back earlier than expected. I tell you this and I say it to everyone, be ready. You don't know the day your Lord will come. What would a homeowner do if he knew when a thief was coming? You know he would be ready and not let the thief break in. So you also must be ready. The Son of Man will come at a time when you don't expect him. Who is this wise and trusted servant? The master trusts one servant to give the other servant their food at the right time. Who is the one that the master trusts to do that work? When the master comes and finds the servant doing the work he gave him, it will be a day of blessing for that servant. I can tell you without a doubt, the master will choose that servant to take care of everything he owns. But what will happen if that servant is evil and thinks his servant will not come back soon? He will begin to beat the other servants. He will eat and drink with others who are drunk. 
Then the master will come when the servant is not ready, at a time when the servant is not expecting him. Then the master will punish that servant. He will send him away to be with the hypocrites, where people will cry and grind their teeth with pain. Father God, we want to be ready. Lord, we ask that you prepare us to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true with thanksgiving. We will be living sanctuary for you. Have your way in our lives and we'll continue to glorify you in every aspect. In Jesus' name, amen.